Hello everyone and welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is June Ann Lewis and I am the founder of Living Wealthy Always and I'm a real estate agent as well. As well as I am the co-founder of Marla Wellness Center. Well, my job today is to tell you about the sense of touch. And this is one of my favorite because I love this because of working in the wellness center industry. Touch is very important to us. So anyway, before I get started, I want you everyone to do me a favor. Put whatever you have down and turn to your left or to your right, which one is closer, and give someone a hug. Thank you. Well, I want everyone to get a hug, so if somebody didn't get a hug, please turn around and hug somebody else. Thanks again. All right, guys. Well, today now we're gonna look at a sense of touch from the human standpoint, from conscious and unconscious standpoint. We're gonna talk about the feel of the human skin. Do you know that the largest organ in your body is actually on the outside of your body? Yes, that's your skin. Your skin has thousands of receptors. And so that contributes to your sense of touch. That's how we feel. And we're going to look today at various centers, such as pain sensors, which is mechanical, which tells you when you get a cut, or thermal sensors, and that tells you whether or not it's hot or cold that gives us that awareness. Chemical sensors that tells us if chemicals is on their skin or anything of the sort. Now, the receptors is the main part of receiving information, but it actually starts there and it travels up the nervous system, then goes to your spinal cord, and then it goes to your brain, and from your brain, it goes to your somatic sensory cortex. And that's the outside here, where you would put, uh, like about a headphones, where you would put that. And if we were to measure the brain activity of this area, we would see that every single part contribute to all of your receptors in your different parts of your body. And of course, some take up more real estate than some. Like for example, your hand and your feet, your genitals, your mouth, your lips, you have more receptors in those. As a matter of fact, in your hands, you have over, in your fingertips, you have over 2,000 receptors in your fingertips. And that allows you to be so sensory sensitive that you can feel a little bump as much as a tiny here on strand on the head, you can feel that particular bump. In the 50s, they wanted to test the relationship between a mother and a child from the sense of touch. That if a child is nurtured by their parents or by a mother, which is the example is which they use, they wanted to see the difference with those children. And of course they use monkeys as the examples for us because they're so related to us, closely related to us as human beings. So what they did is they took a monkey and put it in a cage and then put two fake surrogate mothers, one they made out of mesh, and that they attached on a bottle onto that mother, and which was where the baby monkey would go feed. And then they made another one out of terry cloth, but they did not add a bottle onto that one. And interestingly enough, the baby monkey would go to the mesh where it would, the mesh mother, where it would get its food and feed. And as soon as it was finished and it wanted to feel safe, it ran back to the terry cloth mother and that it hugged. They went on further to even do this study to show that they placed the monkeys where they can see each other. And then they didn't have them where they can touch, but they can see and smell each other. And those monkeys became so depressed, they would rock themselves all day long. But then they took down the barrier and had the monkeys be able to touch. And immediately the monkeys felt better. How interesting. They also did a study at Miami General Hospital because there's over 14,000 babies born there yearly. And what they saw was the premature babies, the ones that got massaged and touched at least three times a day, and they would have it where the parents or the nurse would take care of the baby, where they would massage the baby and stroke the baby at least three times a day. 
those babies excel in their health and their weight gain 50 times faster than the babies that were not touched. And they were sent home even six days earlier than the other babies as well. And even eight months after when they went back, those babies had a better immune system and it developed much better than the babies that weren't touched. That's the importance of touch for us as human beings. Aristotle said that mankind falls short of all the other animal species in regards to senses with the exception of touch. Because of our exact ability to be able to differentiate and make a difference and that's what makes man more intelligent than all the animal species that there is. In 2003, the Attorney General of Michigan placed a warning out during the holiday season advising the shoppers not to have anyone put anything in their hand while they were shopping, the companies not to have them put anything in their hand because that would lead to them probably overspending. And the reason for that is because of the endowment effect. And most of you might have experienced it, at least I know I have where you're out shopping and somebody plays something in your hand and they're describing it and they're telling it to you and all of a sudden you find yourself being very interested and you want to purchase it. Well, the endowment effect comes from the fact that it's a belief that once somebody touches something, feels it, it's a sense of possession. And in a sense of possession, we as human beings, we don't want to let go of something that we possess. So we, in, we can imagine ourselves holding and owning this particular thing, whatever it is. And it shows that people spend more money when they have something placed in their hand, a sale product placed in their hand, or they were apt to more likely buy it if they can envision themselves owning it because of the sense of touch. So that's how powerful the sense of touch is. I'm going to bring it down a little further because I want somebody to really come away with something today. At the Wellness Center, of course, we're in the human touching arena in this event because we do massages, we do facials, and we do therapeutic work with our clients. And so what we noticed, and this was right off the back, we noticed this. Without even intentionally having to, to try and figure this out, we noticed it within a few weeks of doing this. We decided that when our customers come in, that we would give them a hug. So everyone that came, it was, hi, welcome to Marlu Wellness Center. Thank you for coming in. We gave them a big hug and we let them know we do hugs here. And I can tell you without a doubt, those individuals, regardless of how they came in, immediately a big smile came over their face and they felt more welcome. And immediately they started looking around and they were making, you know, at, at notices, oh, your place is so pretty. They had a sense of all the awareness woke up in them because they were giving a hug. We developed a relationship immediately with them just by touching. And especially if that person went in and had a massage or they had a facial done, Oh, you can tell the difference immediately. One of the things that we did is after someone was finished with their services, we asked them to take a picture for us in front of our sign. And I can assure you, every single time somebody got hugged in the beginning, they came out, especially if they had a massage, they were always willing to take a picture. But we can tell the difference. If somebody did not get a hug, if they came in and unfortunately we weren't able to give them a hug because we were busy, the whole atmosphere was different. Not that they were rude, but they were just standard with it. And if you ask this person, especially if they, all they had was an ionic foot detox, which means they weren't touched, if they just had that, that person when they came out and we said, do you mind taking a picture? It was almost most of the time it was, no, I'm sorry, I don't feel like taking a picture, whatever their excuse was. But if they got a hug, and when we gave them a hug, when they came in and gave them a hug after they left or when they were leaving, you can bet and believe that person came back. We had several repeat customers or they referred a family member and a friend. Only because the relationship was developed because they got a hug. They were touched. And I really truly do want somebody to come away with this. I'm going to go a little further into the importance of touch. Many of you know, and you would hear this, and you might have even said it yourself, you had a coworker or somebody that, a teacher, or somebody that's mean and honorary, and you would be, oh my God, that person needs some sex, they need some love, what is the matter with them, they need a relationship. 
I'm going to tell you that is more true than you even know. I know there's a lot of times people say it just to say it. But the importance of that, remember I talked about the genitals having uh, extra receptors and sensitivity? As a human being, we definitely need love and touch. I'm the perfect example. So just to share with you guys, I'm going to get a little into my personal life. My husband passed last year in the Middle East. Well, he had left to go to the Middle East quite a while before. And I noticed, and this is after the fact, that when he was gone the first time, it was okay. I missed him, but you know, it was okay. The kids were there, my children were there, and all of my children are stair steps, so they're very close to each other. But then within a year or so, all of the kids, a year and a half, all of the kids left the house. One went off to college, my son went off to having his own place, my other daughter went to the military, and all of a sudden, I had a syndrome that attacked me. I became mean and honorary, and I did not realize it at the time. I would be in social events and, you know, I would make mean jokes or say things that normally it's not acceptable in society, but I would just say it. And when I would come back from whatever event or wherever I was, I would go, well, why did I do that? I was extra mean, especially when I saw couples or those sorts of things. And I did not realize it at the time. I was suffering from a lack of intimacy, a lack of touch. So it's true when people say somebody needs a relationship or they need to get involved and do something, it is true. We need that as human beings. We need to be in constant contact with each other, which is why I asked you in the beginning to give somebody a hug. It wasn't until my children came back home, or I actually, in reality, became a roommate with one of my, uh, my daughters, that I noticed my personality started to change for the better. But it was then that I realized it was exactly what people would normally say, you need to have some sort of contact. So I hope that helps somebody right now. I didn't have pets or anything like that. So that was a difference. It's truly a difference for me. Maybe if I had a pet, because I'm not a pet person. And I can tell you, once my daughter and I became roommates, one of the things we decided to do every day is that we were going to give each other a hug and say, good morning, how are you? Do you know that I saw the difference in me? And even to go a little further, some days when we forgot that we didn't give each other a hug, we would be at each other a little bit more often than if we gave each other a hug and said, good morning, I love you. But that made a difference in my life. And this is just to throw in something a little extra. They did a study to show that people that are sexually active, which is a big part of a sense of touch, live longer. It showed also that those people have less heart attacks high blood pressure, high cholesterol dosings, have various disease from diabetes right down. That sexual intercourse actually can be a therapy and a healing drug as if it's a healing drug for most things. And that's a major part of a sense of touch and affection. Isn't that something? So in my closing today, I want you to do me a favor. Give at least two to three people a hug today as well as call somebody in your family that might be an older aunt or uncle, somebody that you might think, oh my God, we can't stand being around them. We don't like them. They're always mean. Check to see. Make sure that person gets love. Give them a call. Say hello. Go over to their home and give them a hug. Invite them to more events and do this once you see them. Always make sure that you greet them with a hug rather than the standard this high. Give them a hug. Give them a special extra rub and let them know that you care about them because as human beings, we all need to be touched. Thank you so much and you have a wonderful rest of the day. Enjoy and I look forward to seeing some of you and speaking with you at some other time again. Be blessed. Bye-bye.